than that. Um, um, I'm going to go now to Benoit, um, and I think Benoit is going to, coming from an ecumenical and interfaith perspective, uh, thank you, Benoit, for taking part. Really appreciate it, and good to see you again. So I give you the floor. We're having a little bit of difficulty with Benoit. Can one of the administrators double check? Benoit, can you check your microphone just to make sure it's not muted? Okay, I am mute now. Perfect. Now? We hear you loud and clear, Benoit. Okay, Great. thank you. So uh, I repeat that I will be very short since a lot of things I prepared has been said before by other speakers. Uh, I had prepared uh, five items. Uh, I wanted to speak about the authenticity and historicity of the cultural and religious heritage in the Horn and especially in Tigre. I will be sh very short with it because there was a lot of repetition in it. I wanted to speak about previous hostilities and brutalities amongst believers in the Horn and especially in Tigre. Uh, third, I want to address you about uh, actual brutalities against cultural and religious heritage in uh, Tigre. Uh, I refer to the testimonies we've heard before, and I will uh, extend a little bit more my uh, my explanations uh, when speaking about reactions of religions towards the brutalities in Tigre and with some final remarks about challenges of the ecumenical action in favor of the victims and the religious heritage in Tigre. So let me start by saying, repeating, that uh, the Horn and especially Tigre is a cradle of uh, numerous cultural uh, traditions. First of all, of course, traditions that were there before our uh, actual religions, traditions uh, that we can find on the Aximum archeological sites that are on the list of UNESCO since the 80s and show that the civilizations in Tigre are old for more than uh, millennia, centuries before our era. Uh, the Christian presence in this cradle of Abrahamic religions uh, goes back to the fourth century. And you may know that that Christian presence uh, has been pre-Chalcedonian. So it was there before the Ecumenical Council of uh, Chalcedon. What makes that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Eritrean Orthodox Church uh, that has been erected in 1993 are Tewahedo churches, what means in Gays, we heard about the language united as one and refers to the Oriental, Oriental Orthodox belief in one perfectly unified nature of Christ, as opposed to the two natures uh, commonly uh, believed commonly held by Latin and Eastern Catholic, Eastern Orthodox and Protestant churches. Uh, the heritage of that Ethiopian Orthodox church in Tigre is uh, very old and I refer to uh, the site of Our Lady Mary of Zion, uh, but we heard about it and we heard about the attack of that site uh, in November uh, at the occasion of the festival of Zion Marian uh, that it yearly took place uh, at that monastery that is uh, traditionally claimed to contain the Ark of the Covenant. There was also, and there was already spoken about it, so I don't have to detail it, a uh, very uh, old Islamic presence in the area. The Negash Amidin Neshedi 
is the oldest, oldest mosque in, in, in Africa and by tradition a burial site of several followers of uh, the Prophet Muhammad who during his lifetime fled to the Aksumid kingdom to escape persecution in Mecca. Do not think, it's my second point, that uh, the hostilities and brutalities amongst believers in the Horn and especially in Tigray are new. Since the 14th century, uh, Portuguese voyages opened the way of uh, direct contacts between the Catholic world in the West and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Uh, Catholic missionaries arrived and one of them uh, converted uh, the emperor Susenios in the 17th. So Latinization was uh, a little bit by force imposed in the 17th century. Uh, but the successor of that Susenios emperor in uh, the midst of the 17th century ended the union with Rome and killed all the remaining Latin missionaries. Benoit, I, I, yes. I'm, ju I'm just conscious of time here, Benoit. I am going faster. I do understand. Thank you, Paddy. Okay. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, for the next 200 years, Ethiopia was close to Catholic missions and Catholicism was re-established after the Second World War. But let us not forget that there was also Western brutalities in the region. Uh, I can talk about uh, the massacre of Debre Libanos in 37, uh, for which Cardinal uh, Bassetti, on behalf of the Italian Conference of Bishops, uh, a few months ago uh, presented his apologies uh, to the Ethiopians. But now, the actual brutalities, I don't have to, to, to uh, detail them again. We heard about it during the testimonies. The reactions of the churches. First of all, the reactions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church by mean of uh, Abuna Matias. Uh, the first uh, comment on the war uh, already talked about genocide and repeated it uh, a few weeks ago. And since then, his life is threatened. Uh, the Catholic Church is very careful in its public and certainly political statements. Uh, for the moment, the Catholic Church is centering its efforts in the relief of the poor and the uh, uh, vulnerable victims of the brutalities. Uh, so I, in, in the presentation I finish now, you will see what the Catholic Church has offered as uh, help to what is happening in the region. Uh, that help coming amongst others after an appeal of the Bishop of Aligrat, Monseigneur Medin, Tesfala Selassie, uh, has also been extended by uh, the conference, the Association of uh, African, East African uh, Bishops. Uh, the International Network of Catholic Relief Organization, I called it uh, a few minutes ago before we started the webinar, uh, is also very careful in public declarations, but is uh, still active on the ground with relief for what is happening. Ben, so I, I come to my last point. Please, yeah, uh, really need to move on. Are, the, are there challenges in that ecumenical help uh, in favor of what is happening in Tigray. Yes, the biggest challenge is how can we uh, help uh, local churches, the Ethiopian Church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church to uh, raise its voice. Uh, those churches are national churches, so they are uh, quite uh, hesitating uh, in public uh, declarations because of uh, their uh, local position. In Catholic world, there is a big Catholic network that is the church and that can help. In uh, ecumenical relations, that is not as easy. Uh, the World Council of Churches uh, released an, uh, a press statement in the beginning of the conflict in November last year, but since then, it is quite silent in uh, Geneva. So indeed, 
uh, we should uh, examine how we can uh, urge yes, the I, economical I, I, move. I think, Benoit, on that point, I think your point really is we really need to reflect on how we put this pressure right across uh, 